lots of challenge problem we face, whether it's in in the technology sector or in this, uh, you know, uh, in the ethical considerations. It really reflects what I call the universal law of data science. End of life, there's no free lunch. There's always a trade-off. Okay, and the hard part is how do we make the right trade-off. So what do I mean by that? Well, except that these、uh, data scientists, you know, enjoy pain.、Uh, other than those that, like every one of us as a data scientist, right, or, or you, what we all like to have is we like to have a large amount of clean data, and they are highly informative. And it comes with no headache of the privacy concerns, and the analysis should be simple, right? We all love that kind of thing, okay? But the problem is that in real life, you almost get none of those things. The reason is behind every this kind of wish is a trade-off, right? First, that yes, you can get lots of data, but I'm going to show you how low quality they are. There's also this issue of like you know everybody likes the clean data, and、uh, many people know that、uh, doing the real data science in terms of analysis, people will say not 80 percent, 90 percent time you spend on cleaning the data because data are so dirty. The, the data are so dirty. Well, the problem is that most time when the data are clean, they become irrelevant. Privacy of utility is a huge one, right? We talk a lot about today the the, the AI space. That kind of a privacy issues, but there is actually a big one. There's almost we can say it's elephant in the room. The the U.S.、Uh, Census Bureau has announced, actually now it's being challenged in court, that、uh, they are going to inject noise into the data they're going to release for the reason of pr- protecting privacy. And then the last one, as I said, these are is this relevance versus simplicity. If you don't take in, into account the data quality, there this whole、uh, quantity. Equality. There, this whole what I call the big data paradox, right? You know, the bigger the data, the the the, the sure we fool ourselves because you get a very biased answer, but you have so much data, you will convince yourself you are really doing the right thing. The second part is really going to go quickly about this whole privacy versus the utility,、uh, you know, trade off. As I said,、uh, this is John Abel, who is the associate director of Census Bureau, who is currently leading this whole effort in 2020 census. So in a in a nutshell, what's going to, what they're going to do is they're going to do the sensors, but before they release the data, they're going to add the noise to it. Okay, the idea is by adding noise that it will protect the privacy, which you probably can understand. If you add a lot of noise, this you know the data will be useless, but you know it will protect everybody's privacy, but the data will the data will be all,、uh, also be u- useless. Now this part is going to really scare you, but let me show you you know why I put there. This whole idea is called a defense of privacy. Is actually、uh, one of the leading expert is、uh, our very own Cynthia Dork, and、uh, so if you don't understand this formula, you、um, you can blend her. And、uh, but what this thing does, and I need to I need to this concept because I need to ask you a very important question. Okay, what she formulated this thing is a is a very interesting way of formulating this this,、uh, this notion of data privacy. Okay, now bear with me. Let me explain to you what this notation means. Think about the D as a data set. It's like you know you want to ask everybody's income. You you get all your、uh, let's say your your organization. Does everybody is in your data in your data? Does everybody income is in it? The income is kind of sensitive, right? Okay. So what the D minus D minus say you take out one person. Okay. So the two data set only differ by by say one person. Let's say your data is not in it. One of them including your income. The other one does not including does not include your income. Let's say we take an average. Like in both cases, you take average. One is the average of everybody's income, including yours. The other is take average everybody's income without yours. Now, intuitively, if these two answers are kind of a you know indistinguishable, then your privacy in terms of released by that average is kind of protected, right? Because you know people won't be able to tell whether you are in it or not in it because the answer is pretty much the same. All、right, so that's the whole、uh, whole concept of defined privacy. Technically, is that by injecting some randomness into this answer, that the probability of this answer belong to say into will say you know five hundred thousand to to six hundred thousand. Whether you are in it or not, the probability, the ratio of them is 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 controlled by a number. Now, this is the kind of a scary number. I don't know how many of you still remember the E. E is a two point seven one, whatever. That's for technical reason. You you choose that number. But what's important here is the epsilon. If epsilon equal to zero, but whatever the number to zero's power is one, that means these two things are is essentially distinct, indistinguishable. So this epsilon itself it has a technical term. You may start to hear them、uh, as as the census the project goes on. It's called a private loss budget, right? So the 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 larger the epsilon, the more loss. You、uh, the, the more loss of the privacy, 
And uh, the small epsilon means the less loss of privacy, right? The, the more you use a small epsilon, which means you need to inject lots of noises, you can control the privacy very well. But the problem is when you inject lots of noises that you will also lose lots of information. So the alternative is say, well, let's use some big epsilon. Well, if the big epsilon is saying that by changing one person, the probability can change, you know, change a lot, which means there are quite a bit of extra information about you. I also want to emphasize the notion here is not the absolute pri privacy, it's about additional privacy. Nobody can protect your absolute privacy if you put everything online. Okay, this is the whole thing is about additional privacy is whether whether you know by release data whether they have additional threat to, to you. So you can see this this epsilon privacy loss budget is a very important concept because it basically governs in a technical sense it governs the trade off between the privacy loss and the information loss.